This is the second time that I have been invited to something related with the family apostolate. The first time father was leading children through the village here, praying the rosary, and he asked me to come and uh, pray with them. So I'm grateful, Father, that you have invited me a second time to associate me with this noble cause of the family prayer life. I feel privileged because I'm the only one here present who saw a Father Peyton. That blessed Father. When he came to Uganda, as Father says, in 65, we had a big, big gathering in Kitovu on the playground of St. Henry's College. And he addressed us on the importance of family prayer. Now we are growing in an age which has its own pressing situations. We are growing in an age where the family has difficulties with finding time to be together, even for meals, because of work and the other commitments, like meetings. But this servant of God was insisting that the family should find time to pray together. This is the occasion when we, we are united as a family. Meals is one occasion. And then prayer is another. That's what is encouraging us. But not only that, this reminds us of the culture of prayer life in our lives as individuals, young men and women, grow up in that spirit, in that culture that in your life you find the time for prayer, special prayer, and in this particular case, the rosary. It may be a discovery for some that the whole life of our Lord Jesus Christ, what we find in the Gospels is all in the mysteries of the rosary. Praying the rosary is meditating on the life of our Lord. Try prayer. Try prayer. Yes. I don't know what you do there. Those other schools, I don't know. I'll tell you what happens in North Africa. Some of the African countries allow Christ foreign Christians can come into those countries, but they do not allow the citizens of those countries to become Christian. If you are known becoming Christian, punishment could be death. And in North Africa, there is a church 
dedicated to our lady. It's called Our Lady of Africa, like your school. It is served by the missionaries of Africa, of, uh, missionaries of Africa or white fathers. They told me this story. During the time of exams, that church is filled to capacity. And it's a big church, something like Lubaga Cathedral. Full of students, not Christian students, not Catholic students, but Muslim students. What do they come for? To pray for success. Try prayer. Even those non-Christian people know that in, at least in case of need, in time of need, prayer can work. Try prayer. As I said, I don't know what is, happens in those schools outside Kampala. But here, in Kampala, during the time of exams, or when exams are approaching, every party priest will tell you, we are going to pray with the candidates. Candidates are coming for prayer. Candidates are asked to prayer. There are even masses that are announced. Sinus is of asking for mass for their child who is going to do exam. PLOE. It's for exam higher and so on. Try prayer. We have heard that example of Father Peyton, who was very sick, deadly sickness. He had no medicine in that, those days. And he was healed, dedicated his life to promoting prayer in the family. I say today's life is complicated, difficult. But the meaning, the importance of this day, of this celebration, is to remind us all that we should always find time in our life for prayer. 